Moving on, and the kidnapping of those young schoolgirls in Chibok, northern Nigeria, has focused global attention on the Islamist group Boko Haram. The group, whose name means Western education is forbidden, wants secular Nigeria to become an Islamic state. But the abduction was not the first nor the last in the region. In fact, women have become currency for the Islamist militants. And now, in cooperation with Marie Claire International, I'm joined by two of their journalists, Manon Brunel and Veronique de Vigoury, who have just returned from Chibok, where they've been reporting on the dangers facing women in that part of the world. Manon and Veronique, uh, thank you to both of you for joining me. Veronique, um, as I was saying earlier, the, the Chibok abduction was not the first time that no. young women have been kidnapped. No, it's been years that uh, women have been uh, kidnapped in the region. I mean, it started with the... Uh, so army, Nigerian army who jailed some uh, women and children of uh, suspected, uh, suspected Boko Haram members. And uh, Boko Haram, uh, in uh, retortion, started to kidnap soldiers, wives and children. Well, have any of those women actually ever been returned to their families, Manon? The, the wife of the Boko Haram members, some of them, but it's very difficult to investigate on these kind of cases because the army wants this to be undercover. The only thing we know for sure is that the wife of the police guys that had been um, kidnapped by Boko Haram were released. It's, it's a war and both sides have their own way to hurt the other one and women obviously is one of them. And as we were saying earlier, Veronique, women have become a currency, haven't they? Yeah, it's uh, it's basically you you take mine, I take yours, you you know, and uh, it's just uh, I would as I even now could say use as a weapon of war to hurt the other side. Now the other thing about Nigeria is the fact that uh, only one in three children actually go to school, so it must be very difficult for parents in that part of the world to want to send their children to school, particularly their young girls. All the most who sees these girls that had been kidnapped, they were uh, that close to complete their education and go to university. And there are very few in this, uh, most of the mothers of these girls, they can't read and write. So for them, it was a big revenge. And so now the girls are just missing. So some of them just have regret. They say, if I didn't send them to school, they would still be with me. So it's very, it's very difficult because they blame themselves for that, and they should not, obviously. And Veronique, did you meet any young women in particular that uh, made an impression on you? I mean, there was this uh, mother called uh, Yana, whose girl has been kidnapped. And uh, as Manon just explained, she just was very moving because she really wanted her girl, and this is her world, saying, I wanted her to overpass me. It was impressive because she said, my daughter wanted to get married, and I said, no, I want you to carry on with your education, which is quite something in this part of the world. Yeah, they, they were very strong and uh, with a lot of uh, dignity women who, you know, um, I mean, they, they had a strong will of changing something, and then they have been punished for that. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you to both of you. you. And you can you. read their report in this month's issue of Marie Claire France. It's also in the current editions of Marie Claire USA, Korea, Thailand, Australia and Mexico, among others. And that's it for now. If you'd like to comment on what you've just seen, please head to our Facebook page, France 24, full stop, the 51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. Thanks for your feedback so far, and please keep those comments rolling in. Until our next program. Bye for now.